In Africa's savage wilds, one law governs all. Adapt or die trying. It's survival at its most extreme. Unforgiving, unforgettable. Africa's deadly kingdom. Across seas of green and gold, Africa's grasslands stretch out on an immense scale. Creatures move to an ancient rhythm here, rolling with the ever-changing seasons. Grasslands sustain more large animals than any other habitat on Earth. Times of plenty invigorate predator and prey alike. But these seasonal Edens have a dark side. During times of drought, the grass stores its energy deep in its roots and grazers go hungry. The parched earth offers nothing but hot winds and dust. The large herds have moved on. Those that remain must struggle as they wait for the rains to return. the height of the dry season, and Zambia's lure plain absolutely bakes. This grassland's annual drought weeds out the weak. For the resourceful, spotted hyenas of Lua, it's a time to thrive. The dominant carnivores on these plains monopolize the last remaining water for miles. leaving their prey no choice but to come directly to them. Despite their scavenger reputation, hyenas hunt and kill most of their food. They force the wildebeest into a gallop, shaking out the frail or injured. No weakness here. And the clan has more pressing matters to attend to. They must return home. Clan life centers on a network of burrows. The matriarch's younger sister is now a mother. Her two female cubs, just a few weeks old, don't realize their royalty. In the complex world of hyena society, females outrank the males. Female cubs inherit their mother's status. These two are born princesses.
The hyena owe their success to their talent for exploiting opportunities. They live by the motto, Carpe Diem, seize the day. Or in this case, Carpe Catfish. In tougher times, they can sniff out food from over two kilometers away. But with the shrinking pools, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. They aren't the only predators here. A lioness stalks the plains, practically invisible. She hunts alone. Why she has no pride is her lonely secret. Her target, the wildebeest, keep to the green clearings. Reaching them means she must break cover. Without a pride to act as her wingman, she needs cunning and can't let an opportunity pass. Acting nonchalant only gets her so far. She gives up. Far to the north, toward the equator, one of the greatest grasslands on Earth unfurls across 30,000 square kilometers, bigger than the state of Vermont. The Serengeti Plains. home to the largest gathering of land mammals on the planet. More than a million blue wildebeest gather to graze the short grass of the southeast. With more on the way. It's carving season. And this mother-to-be has waited over eight months for this day. Now everything depends on these next few moments. She's at her most vulnerable. Plains offer nowhere to hide. So her calf is born ready for action.
out of the womb and on his feet in about six minutes. His life depends on it. He shares the Serengeti with the world's largest population of hyena. By one hour old, the calf can run at his mother's side. That's the only way he'll make it past hour two. In lean times, the hyenas of the Serengeti ignore territorial boundaries and commute for kilometers across enemy lines in search of a meal. and their prey is about to hit the road too. One and a half million grazing animals put a lot of strain on the tastier grasses of the southern plains. The wildebeest mow down four and a half thousand tons of grass a day, forcing them north in search of greener pastures. The largest migration of land mammals on Earth is underway. A lifelong circular route in search of food and water. They won't all make it, for a quarter of a million of the old, the weak and the unlucky, this will be their last journey. After days without water, the smell of a distant river motivates the desperately thirsty herds. The Grometi River. Their arrival has not gone unnoticed by the resident crocodiles. The first wave of wildebeest gathers at the water's edge. It whets their appetite. For the Serengeti's wildebeest on their 1,000 kilometer journey, the Grometi River is both a savior and a trap. It provides the only water for many kilometers, so the herds crowd its banks by the thousands. The crocodiles have waited almost all year for this. The wildebeest may know the dangers, but thirst quenches fear. time and numbers on his side as the next wave of thirsty beasts arrives.
those jaws at 350 kilograms per square centimeter are inescapable. And hundreds of them line this stretch of river. Which doesn't make for intimate dining. In the northern reaches of Zambia's Kafui National Park, another grassland rises from the swamps for just a few months a year. The receding waters of the Lufupa River reveal an ancient lake bed as the dry season steals across the Basanga Plains. marooned on islands during the wet season. The Busanga pride returns to reclaim its hunting grounds. Out here, keeping your feet dry is not an option. While these lions share their species' dislike for deep water, in this boggy grassland, they have to overcome their squeamishness. Their prey happens to be some of the most water-loving antelope in Africa. Puku antelope and their even more aquatic relative, the red lechwe, lope across these soggy grasslands on elongated hooves. The oily fur on their long legs repels water. At the onset of the dry season, grass cover is at its peak. Ideal for lactating lechwe and their calves. They gather in the swampy areas, ready to flee into the deep channels at any hint of danger. Their wariness and the spongy terrain discourages most predators, but not all. To the pride, the clashing horns of the rutting rams sound like an ice cream truck. Even with full bellies, there's always room for antelope. Their two cubs watch intently as the adults steal closer to the preoccupied rams. It's showtime. The Busanga Pride, a seamless, focused hunting machine sets its sights on Red Lechwe. The lionesses silently peel off in different directions. creating the trap perfected over years of hunting together.
Well, maybe not perfected. 70% of lion hunts fail. But it might be too soon for an antelope victory dance. The pride retreats for now and waits for another opportunity. The youngest cub, barely weaned, always eats last. Sometimes missing out entirely. The longer the pride takes to hunt, the weaker she'll become. They wait out the heat of the day, unusually in a tree. Besides a useful vantage point to survey the plains, they have a million other reasons for tree hugging. Biting insects. Even the kings of the plains must endure the royal pain from the buzzing cloud of pests. Lions spend nearly 20 hours a day resting. And the tree is the perfect place for a fly-free catnap. The lighter members of the pride have no trouble scaling the branches, where the flies are fewer. The heavier males, at over 200 kilograms, don't have much of a head for heights. They will wait out their torment together. They know the pride will descend eventually. At the end of the dry season on Lua Plain, the situation reaches boiling point. Clouds unleash their pent-up power in a terrifying show of force. Wild fires consume the savannah. dark and deafening storm disorients the wildebeest. Creating the perfect storm for the hyenas to hunt. They circle ever closer. They have no use for stealth. They have numbers and stamina. Never sure from where the attack may come, the wildebeest panic. Exactly what the clan counts on. Tonight, their teamwork pays off. Oh, 
As dawn breaks, so does the drought. Over the season, nearly a meter of rain will soak the thirsty land and its thirstier residents. Life for the hyena goes swimmingly. While great for a cooling dip, pools are the perfect spot to stash last night's leftovers. Clearly, there is no honor among thieves. The rain and the fertile ash of the fires transforms Lua Plain in a spectacular celebration of the end of the dry season. And 40,000 wildebeest have come to party. The second largest migration of wildebeest in Africa. They have their now more robust calves in tow. The season of plenty is here. For the wildebeest and the lone lioness. Her focus is absolute. The lone lioness prepares her deadly welcome for the migrating wildebeest of Lower Plain. <laughs> Foiled again. Even the calves need just a short head start to dodge the hunter across open ground. For another grassland resident, small size brings big benefits. Servals weigh only 13 kilograms, but have the longest legs of any cat relative to size. Equipped with ultrasonic hearing and enormous ears that can rotate 180 degrees independently, being quiet as a mouse isn't quiet enough. On a good day, he can make up to 16 kills, the highest hunting success rate in the cat family.
In the Serengeti, the larger migration continues to sweep northward. The relentless din from a million wildebeest mothers calling to their calves reaches a crescendo. As the bulls add their own competitive snorts. The wildebeest cows, only a few months after giving birth, are in estrus again. Plodding ever onward, they mate on the move. Dominant bulls stake out small temporary territories, seducing the females with posturing and grunting. But nothing stops the migration. They are joined on this annual odyssey by 200,000 zebra. The stallions must shoulder the added pressure of keeping their mares and their foals together as they trudge across the grassland. Members of the herd recognize each other by their stripe patterns, unique as fingerprints. Foals and their mothers memorize each other's patterns at birth and can pick each other out of a dazzle of stripes. To avoid competition with short grass loving wildebeest, zebra opt for the longer grass. They too take their toll on the plains and, like the wildebeest, they must continue onwards. The same motivation drives them, the search for fresh grass and water. They're all about to face their greatest challenge, crossing the Mara River, the only permanent river in the entire Serengeti. The Mara makes the Grometi River they crossed earlier look like a kiddie pool. And below its languid waters wait river monsters of legendary size. No place along their 1,000 kilometer journey is more treacherous than the Mara. While the Grometi River posed a serious challenge, this river is wider, deeper, and swifter. The Mara's notoriously steep banks offer relatively few safe crossing points. this half-ton river master is counting on. The first wildebeests take the plunge, and the croc makes no attempt to hide his approach. Like zombies on the hoof, the wildebeest become an unthinking, unstoppable force, driven by instinct more than intellect. Croc 
has underestimated the sheer number of them. It would behoove him to retreat or be trampled. As the herds continue to pour into the river, he changes his tack. The ambush is set. As the desperately thirsty wildebeest of the Serengeti gather at the edge of the Mara River, they face a predator with a simple yet deadly hunting strategy. The crocodile gets close, then disappears. He may have gone the whole year without eating, waiting for this gigantic payday. He's not about to give up that easily. His kill doesn't remain a secret for long. Surprisingly social creatures, crocodiles adhere to a strict hierarchy, especially when it comes to food. A fact the river master, the biggest and oldest croc in this stretch of river, is quick to remind others of. But they will soon have plenty of hunting opportunities of their own. The days go by and pandemonium rules the river as zebra and wildebeest continue to arrive. At the shallower points, many cross with ease. Others by the skin of their teeth. This is the end of the road. While the Mara River's crocodiles dispatch hundreds of wildebeest each year, they're not the biggest killer. The frenzied wildebeest blindly follow each other across the river, racing toward disaster. Running headlong into blocked exit points, the wildebeest exhaust themselves and drown by the hundreds. For each animal that falls to the gaping jaws of the crocodiles, the river claims 50. In the aftermath, over 1,000 tons of dead wildebeest line the banks. Yet this carnage brings life to the river and the surrounding grasslands.
Back on Luba Plain, the promise of another storm blows through the grass. The lone lioness knows she can use the rushing wind to her advantage. It dulls the wildebeest's ability to smell and hear. A new calf, born too late in the season, stood no chance against 130 kilograms of raw power. Twilight steals over the Busanga Plains, as the pride begins to stir. The fate of the hungry cubs depends entirely on the lionesses. the lounging cats become focused killers. Darkness gives the Busanga pride the edge they need. Lionesses lead the cubs across the floating carpet of grass to the fresh kill. A welcome feast for the little female and her brother. learn to fight for their portion. Lionesses share begrudgingly. The males even less so. They demand the lion's share. By dawn, the food fight's forgotten. Soon the pride will return to higher ground as the rising Lofupa River swallows the grassland.
the lead lioness reveals her tiny secret. This year, one more Pride member will leave the plains. A single cub. For lion litters, that's unusual. But then again, being born into this pride of swimming and tree-climbing lions here, perhaps nothing's unusual. The wildebeest of the Serengeti can rest for now upon the seemingly endless, edible carpet of Kenya's Maasai Mara. Soon, in answer to a mysterious call, they'll lift their heads to the breeze and begin the arduous odyssey back toward the southern plains to give birth. The crocodiles face a lean season ahead. They will slow their metabolism, surviving for months without food. Next year, as millions of hooves once again thunder toward their river, they'll be waiting. On Lua Plain, the season has been kind to the hyena clan. And the next generation is growing fast. Away from the crowded main den, the matriarch has a surprise with her. A newborn, destined to inherit her mother's rank and dominance. In a week or two, she will return to the den to introduce her clan to their future queen. The lioness continues her reign too and she'll need to hunt again soon. This time, she's not alone. This huge male didn't just come for the food. He's also here for her. The beginnings of a new pride, maintaining balance in this great grassland. An intricate web of life and death connects all who make their home on Africa's grasslands. All pursue the same goal. to continue their lineage and secure their species' future. In the seasonal cycles of plenty and hardship, each learns to adapt, risking its life every day to make it to tomorrow. 